Hello, Internet! Today, we're going to talk about the herbicide glyphosate. Glyphosate is the most commonly used herbicide in the United States with over 200 million pounds used annually. And what does this chemical do? Well, it kills weeds. Glyphosate is an enzyme inhibitor. It stops the activity of the enzyme 5 enyl pyruval shikimate 3 phosphate synthase from doing its job, which is to assist in the production of three essential amino acids, tyrosine, tryptophan, and phenylalanine. There are 22 amino acids that all creatures need to survive. Not having three means death. But it's important to remember that humans and other animals don't actually make any 5 enyl pyruval shikimate 3 phosphate synthase themselves. We've got mouths instead. We eat creatures, plants, who make these fancy molecules themselves so that we don't have to do it. So, if we don't have any copies of this enzyme, then glyphosate shouldn't do us any damage, right? Sort of. Glyphosate was developed in 1970 by a company called Monsanto. For the last 45 years, they've been marketing it under the name of Roundup. However, Roundup didn't actually reach absurdly high levels of use until genetic modification technology became available in the 1990s. Monsanto developed Roundup Ready Soy in 1994 and Roundup Ready Corn in 1996. These crops both contain an alternative version of the enzyme 5-enolpyruvalshikimate-3-phosphate synthase that's derived from bacteria and is not inhibited by glyphosate. Today, about 90% of the soybeans and 70% of the corn grown in the United States is Roundup ready. All right, let's pause here for a second because it's about to get pretty complicated. There are four, count them, four hot button issues which make talking about this chemical extremely difficult because somebody is bound to get angry at you. And they should get angry because a lot of this stuff is really, really messed up. So here's the deal. Some people are upset about genetic modification. Other people are worried about the toxicity of herbicides and pesticides. Other people are worried about the ecological effects of gigantic monocultures. And still other people are worried that our agricultural system has fallen under the sway of gigantic multinational corporations like Monsanto. These problems are all intertwined, but they have very distinct solutions. Unfortunately, the public debate surrounding these issues tends to look like this. GMOs are bad! GMOs are bad! GMOs are really, 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 really bad! That might be true, but let's try to figure out why, okay? Let's look at each one of these four issues individually. Issue number one. Is Monsanto bad? Absolutely, unequivocally, yes. They're terrible. Most of Monsanto's terribleness comes from the revolving door connecting lobbyists with politicians and the way that both of those groups use their influence to create unjust intellectual property law which hurts farmers. Monsanto is famous for prosecuting farmers who try to save Monsanto seed for another season or hybridize it with their local varieties. In general, Monsanto policies hurt small farmers and incentivize large monocultures with a heavy reliance on chemicals like glyphosate. However, it's important to remember that Monsanto, as a corporation, is distinct from the idea of monoculture, or of chemical use, or even of genetic modification. Monsanto is terrible for political reasons, and it's possible that those other ideas associated with it could be applied sustainably in a different context. <laughs> Except for monoculture. Monoculture is just really, really, really terrible. Issue number two. Is monoculture bad? The problem with monoculture is that it optimizes land use for machines at the expense of things like biodiversity and human accessibility and even yield. Even yield. Yields could be much higher if we planted different species of plants together to take advantage of different growth patterns and heights and seasons and things like that. That's what we used to do. But the problem with that is that it's very difficult to build a machine that can harvest one kind of plant while leaving another one intact. And so we have millions of acres occupied by a loose grid of one kind of creature. This keeps prices low. However, it also keeps pest populations unusually high, and so this kind of farming requires a lot of pesticides. A lot. Does that mean that agricultural chemicals are terrible too? Issue number three. Are agricultural chemicals bad? Actually, no. Not if they're used outside of a monocultural context. Let's go back to glyphosate. A lot of the concerns associated with Roundup aren't about the toxicity of the chemical itself, but about its indirect ecological effects. For example, glyphosate runoff has been shown to be particularly destructive towards aquatic ecosystems. But 
The only way that Roundup could ever reach those aquatic ecosystems when it's supposed to be applied just to crops is when it's being applied massively and repeatedly over a huge area. Monoculture applications. If you're just applying Roundup to your backyard garden for a pesky weed, it's not gonna do that much harm. If we use chemicals infrequently for a specific pest in a localized area, we can protect our crops without bulldozing the surrounding environment. The goal is to use chemicals that are ecologically specific. Oddly enough, this is the promise of genetic modification. Issue number four, is genetic modification bad. Let's think about what's been done to these Roundup Ready plants. They've been given an alternative copy of 5-enyl pyruval shikimate 3-phosphate synthase, a copy that is not inhibited by glyphosate. Glyphosate can then be applied directly to these plants and it will leave them alone even while it eliminates the more harmful weeds directly next door. This could be an incredibly specific kind of chemical control if it were used properly. It often isn't. Take another GM crop, BT corn. BT corn has been modified to produce a bacterial toxin which is toxic to caterpillars. It is not, however, toxic to beetles or grasshoppers or even humans. BT toxin is produced inside the tissues of the plants, and so there's no risk of it leaching into the environment as it would if the pesticide were applied willy-nilly all over the place. Basically, genetic modification has the potential of producing highly specific, ecologically sensitive methods to control pests. Unfortunately, the way we've been using genetic modification has served to increase, not decrease, our ecological footprint. However, that has more to do with the particular politics of Monsanto and the particular economic conditions that support monoculture, and not anything inherent in the genetic modification process itself, or even with the nature of pesticides. Here is why I get so frustrated with the GMO debate. The fact of the matter is, GMOs are not inherently evil. They're certainly not going to give you cancer, although there are plenty of articles that will tell you otherwise. The same is true for many kinds of pesticide. The problem with these technologies is not inherent, but rather that their development and use is controlled by terrible corporations who use their power to expand a monocultural food system which is destroying the planet. This doesn't have to be the case. In fact, there is a very simple solution that you can do right now which doesn't involve changing a single law. Are you ready? Here it is. Start growing your own food. That's it. I assume you have access to a windowsill. Put a plant on it, seriously. It's that simple. The problem with our agricultural system isn't the toxicity of GMOs or agricultural chemicals. The problem is that we have given away our ability to produce the food which sustains us. It's time to take that ability back. So put a plant on your windowsill! Seriously, you don't even need seeds! The next time you cook carrots, just take the ends and put them in some dirt! It will grow, I promise! These are the radishes, the celery, the beets, basil, parsley, carrot tops, from bits of carrot that I planted, bok choy, leeks. All the food in this garden is grown from things that most people consider to be garbage. And then, if you're feeling ambitious, plant a little garden! Hell, spray it with some pesticides if the pests get really bad one year! The point is that any food that you you grow yourself, keeps money in your pocket, and out of the coffers of companies like Monsanto. That's it. That's the end of the video. Go! Grow your own food! The food system can feel impossibly complicated and broken beyond repair. But then there's the simple act of taking care of another living creature and pulling your nourishment directly out of the dirt that can immediately reconnect you with what food is supposed to feel like. Only after we experience this original agricultural process can we hope to make informed decisions about pesticides or genetic engineering or agricultural economics. So go plant something. Seriously, right now, go do it. Go get a pot and fill it with some dirt. Video's done. <laughs> That's it. Hit the little X and then go outside and, and fill a pot with dirt and put a plant in it. It'll make you really happy, I promise. I, I really promise it'll make you happy. And then in like a month or so, you'll have food to eat and then that'll make you really happy. And it's just, it's a really good thing to do. So, uh, yeah, plant some plants. Yeah. Okay.